Welcome to my slightly late, um, everything's late now in the world if you do it five minutes before something else, uh, analysis of the Candidates Tournament Round 2. So uh, the kind of format I'm using, I'm going to basically pick one game to look at the most and um, I'm going to have a quick look at the critical moments and some of the other games so you get an overview of what was important, important from the day. Hope you're all doing right and, you know, in these tough times, stay positive. Um, there's loads of chess out there. Stay safe. Um, you know, I think I've decided to stop watching a lot of the news now because it's just too depressing. We all know what we should be doing. I mean, uh, worst case scenario for young and healthy, you should be all right anyway. Um, but yeah, obviously worrying times. Just stay positive, guys. So my game of the day, uh, I'm actually going to pick... MVL, MVL versus Ding Liren. Um, now Fabiano uh, also played a very good game, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that a little bit later on. I'm going to concentrate mainly just on some moments from this game more than anything. MVL, probably the person I would like to see uh, win this the most. Um, you know, this guy who's come in at the last moment. Uh, He's got his place. It could be a good little story. And I, I like MVL <laughs> as well. Um, you know, probably know him a bit better than everyone else. Also like to see Grischuk do well. Um, nothing against, don't dislike any of them. Let's just make that clear. So MVL with the white pieces. And he's playing Ding Liren, who lost the first round. And, you know, Ding Liren, can he bounce back in this game? And it starts off with a, a standard Raul Lopez. Um, the thing with MVL, one thing I thought might hold him up is his opening is very predictable, generally. You know, he plays the same stuff, especially as Black. He plays the Grunfeld and the Nidorf, making him a bit of a target, you know. So that's, you know, I fear for some of his openings is if, you know, like if he's got Black against Caruana, then I think he could be a real target. Caruana's preparation seems to be the best out there uh, in the world. Um, so... We had the main line, uh, and now Black has to decide whether to put a bishop here or on a c5. Bishop c5's what Fabi chose, I believe. Is that right? Um, uh, during in, in round one, I think. Maybe this round. We'll come, come to it in a second. No, it must be in round one. And this is the Archangel variation. It's slightly more aggressive than putting the bishop on e7. Uh, the bishop is more active here on this diagonal, but... You might get hit by bishop g5 when when you get into in, into rather nasty pin. So it's it's got its downsides. Bishop e7 more traditional. And now main line rook e1 and b5 bishop b3 castles and again one of the main moves here h3 just stopping any any problems that could occur with uh, this this bishop g4 move. Bishop b7 played, and now d3, very normal manoeuvres, and now d6, which is again the traditional move at the moment. Uh, a more active way to play, if you're looking at, you know, this bishop b7 has said is not as active, but you, you can still play it with, with uh, pawn sacrifices in mind. And, you know, c3 moves generally run into martial-like gambits with, with d5, but even after d3, where this bishop can develop. Black can try d5 here. This is a more active gambit line where you get something like this. And if you know the martial gambit, white wins this pawn. But white has bad development on the queen side and black is nearly fu fully mobilized here. The black can play something like c6, bishop d6 and try to get very active, you know, or, or, or queen d7 first, queen d6 first even. All these kind of moves have been tried and black is is up in development maybe this not this bishop on b7 could be great so this is kind of a modern way of playing and um if i you know i i I'd, I'd make sure you know this position if you're playing it for either side because it's much sharper but the thing with these lines these lines like d5 where you give a pawn and it, it basically is it's going to be very heavily analyzed i mean mvl and din liran must have must have you know both analyzed this deeply and you know, obviously MVL will be ready for this. So at their level, um, they will know what's going on. But maybe at my level or, you know, your, you guys' levels, our levels, should I say, um, 
it's it's a move you can you know you can certainly get some quick victories in. Uh, so after d6, a3 now played, uh, and the point behind this is as soon as d6 is played, black's defending the pawn on e5. So black is threatening to play knight to a5 and get rid of your best minor piece. In the in the rule Lopez, this bishop is really worth keeping hold of, uh, and of course black can't play this here because you just lose the pawn but after the move d6 knight a5 is is a positional threat you don't want to lose this bishop in 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 the rule lopez so there's two ways of doing it you can play traditionally with c3 or with a3 and a3 is becoming quite trendy now after this move you just drop back and you keep your bishop um so queen d7 and this is like the modern way blacks um you know playing uh, this 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 move just you know getting the rooks connected, but also allowing this knight sometimes to come back here with c5 ideas. It's where you know this knight often maneuvers to clear up some lines. MVL now plays knight c3. Um, he hasn't gone for the c3 line. When you play a3, you're indicating you want to put your knight here, and you often come here and you just try to get a small advantage. And after rook f8, preparing bishop to f8. Uh, this is another very normal maneuver. The bishop is actually best on g7, but it's quite hard to get it there in, in the opening. It's best on g7 because at some point something will happen with the e5 pawn, and then the bishop will open up. It's not very good on e7. Bishop d2, developing, and now knight to d8. And MVL just plays very simply, knight to d5. This is the standard idea. And after knight takes d5, e takes d5. Now, I feel black should be okay around here, but already there's some problems. It's black's pieces, these two. The bishop on b7, watch this guy, it's really bad. And here it's just stuck behind this pawn. You could say the bishop on b3 is stuck behind this pawn. But this has got much more potential, because you can go c4, bring it back to c2. You can, even later on, when going c4 and get rid of this pawn, bring it to a4. Uh, the knight on d8 only really has the f7 square. So already uh, it should be okay for black, but it's not okay. <laughs> you know, it's a bit easier for white. I, w I prefer slightly to be white already. So c5 was played, trying to get some space, and now a4. And now f5. And I'm not so sure about this move. I, sh I understand Ding wants to get active. This is the first new move, but it seems... As we're going to see, maybe this just overextends the king side. There was one previous game where f6 was played. And, you know, just trying to get the knight here and playing it a bit slower. Maybe this is okay. But already, I I'm not so sure about this position for black. And after f5, MVL now takes takes off that one and plays c4. And now this pawn is cemented on that square. And this bishop, I mean, look at that bishop. How does it ever get in the game? You have to try to bring it in like this or like this. It's really badly placed. You want this bishop to be on d7. If you could put that bishop on d7, you'd be a lot happier because then you might be able to get some kind of attack against the king, but it's really badly placed here. And after knight f7, simply pawn takes b5. I know this is losing a bit of hold in this, but it's a pawn because you can't take here because bishop a4 already Ding's preparation has gone horribly wrong. So what is going on with Ding? I mean, Ding's a great player. He's had a very bad first two rounds. It'd be very interesting to see if he recover. I mean, I even saw Peter Heine Nielsen, um, Carlson second, saying that he he reckoned after two losses, okay, given the result away, but you know, uh, you can see it's going that way, that you can't win the candidates anymore. I, I'm I'm not going to write off Ding as much as that because I, I i think he's a fantastic player but this is going to be his first real test in chess can he bounce back uh i actually know what's going on in round three but i won't give that uh, away uh, he's playing fabiano with black in round three and this position is horrible and i understand what he does now he goes g5 and he basically says okay I, i've got a bad position i need to complicate but mvl very calmly just stops these ideas. And this is a class move. It's controlling g4, so black can't play here. And it's just stopping the advance. Now black comes up with a plan of 
trying to play h5. But of course, the king is very weak here. So now MVL takes the initiative on the king side as well. This move trying to get rid of the f5 pawn so you can get the e4 square for your pieces. And we're going to see this is important. Knight h6, queen f3. White is dominating both sides of the board. Bishop d8, hope trying to get this bishop out. Queen g2, allowing the knight to come here. F4, and now this square is under white's control. White plays b4 first, and this has an idea to get rid of this pawn. So we have sort of some d4 ideas. Bishop here, check, taking on c5, and now pawn takes. And black certainly did not want to play pawn takes here because it makes this bishop horrible. The other bishop is horrible. White has a passed pawn, and you lose protection of this pawn. And here it's very easy for white now. The issue was, if bishop takes, white was probably planning to play d4. You can't take with a pawn because you're rook. And if you go bishop takes d4, knight f3 looks like a very strong move to me. Threatening the bishop, threatening the pawn on g5, and this is horrendously losing terrible for black. So d takes c5, and now white just improves his pieces and hits the weakened pawns here on these two squares. Knight f7, bishop c3, hit. Not the kind of position MVL is going to let slip, and he plays very nicely tactically. If he can win this one, black's king will fall apart. Um, he plays it simply, just exchanges off queens. These pawns are too dangerous. Remember, he's a pawn up. He has pressure against a lot of weak pawns as well. And now, remember we mentioned this square is important. Knight d2. The knight is threatening to come there with check. And then maybe just get rid of that one and then play this move. Rook d8, d6, another nice little tactic. And the point of this is, like, rook d6 was played. Other moves don't really help here. Uh, if you go knight takes d6, of course, this square will, will drop. And after rook takes d6, rook b1. And this is very clever, the way MVL's done it. He's opened up his bishop and he's just got this pawn. Knight d8 defending, and now b7 anyway. Very nice finish from MVL. And now if knight takes, you've got knight e4. Bishop can't take it. The game ended. Bishop takes, and now bishop a5. Getting rid of the defender of the bishop. And white wins a piece of black. Resigned. Very nice game uh, from MVL. Uh, uh, very impressive. Uh, Ding has got lots to prove. Uh, really, you know, not a good day. I mean, he lost that first game rather sloppily by playing f4. This game, his preparation just wasn't up to it, which surprises me. So worrying times to ding. Now, quickly, let's have a look at the other games. Now, um, maybe game of the day could have been Fabiano's game as well. And we'll look at just moments. He played his first novelty. This is against Alexenko. Fabiano Caruana with the white pieces did beat Alexenko. And his first novelty was D6. A very natural looking move to me, using your past pawn. And after a couple of moves, it became clear that Fabiano's preparation, and this was still his preparation, he had prepared mainly rook b8 here, but rook e6 was a bad move because after bishop f4, this pawn and knight c7 has become very strong. A horrendous opening, really, for Alexenko. And the rest of the game continued. Very nice play from Fabiano, who went on to win. Okay, here black decided to sacrifice a piece, and... It didn't quite ever materialise. And if we go forwards a little bit more, there was a very nice finish in this position. White is actually equal in material. Black has three pawns. But if you look at all of White's pieces, they're all lined up against that guy. And he plays knight takes h5. And the point is, after bishop takes f5, he breaks down the barrier towards Black's king. And after a couple of moves, it's clear that Black is going to lose because a rook takes g5. It's a very nice game. Uh, Caruana seems to be on great form. Um, now, Geary was struggling again, and this was against Wang Hao. Wang Hao doing much better than I assumed he would do. Now, when I looked at this game, it, it, we got to this sort of ending where Geary was a pawn down. He managed to draw. And the one moment, I think, that could have been the winning idea, what, I've, what I think, is in this position here. This position here, White has an extra pawn, and he needs to try to queen this one. After bishop c6, he loses a bit of control of these ranks, and the game ended with knight c4. Black is able to activate the knight, and eventually 
Black gets enough activity with these two pieces, as we see. I mean, even though saying that in the final position, a bit surprised by Wang Hao's play because he could have played King E3 here. And this would have been a very decent winning try. He didn't try this. So I think there's a bit of negativity from Wang Hao in this game. Point being after Knight takes G3. Maybe he just didn't see this move. It's a very clever computer move. You play Rook D1. Why why did you play Rook D1? You need to get this Rook away from behind the white pass pawn. Because at the moment this Rook is stopping white's pawn from advancing. And by covering B1, we're now going to put our King on C3. So for example... Yes, you lose a pawn, but after king c3, the rook cannot maintain its file here. And whatever black plays, this b pawn could win the day. So he could have played on at the end, but maybe he didn't see rook d1. And the other thing is here, rather than putting the bishop on c6, had he played bishop d3, he would have much better winning chances. And the point of this is you stop this knight c4. You cover your second rank because you are actually just going to play bishop e2. Let's play a move for black, let's say f5. We put the bishop on e2. And now our rook can move. And we're not going to get checked. So I don't know what black plays. I'm just going to play a move. Not there because that loses a piece. Let's say there. And the difference with the game, we're still defending this pawn very solidly. And we've got to use our rook to get rid of the knight. Maybe try to hit these pawns. And we keep our king defended. So this is not check. And I think this was the winning try. The last game um, was a, a Berlin between Grischuk and Nepononichi. Or Nepo as I call him. I still can't pronounce his name right. And actually Grischuk was doing pretty well in this game. And he missed one chance here with black pieces. Uh, let me just get this right here. Black is doing quite well. Pressure here. And white's pawns have become weak. And he played knight to d8. And this ended with opposite kind of bishops, not many pieces. Had he played knight to e7, the knight would have found much better squares. For example, imagine the knight getting to d5, where it has multiple threats against the rook, the bishop, and the pawn. So that was slightly missed opportunity there for, for Grischuk. But all in all, very exciting stuff. And let's just have a look at the results um, so far. And tomorrow's pairings as well. So, so far, the results are Caruana has beat Alexenko, one and a half. Uh, MVL is doing very well, one and a half. Ding on zero. Unbelievable. Wang Hao on one and a half. And tomorrow, the big game, or today, should I say, it's going on now, and I'll try to do an update of that today as well, so we're up to date. A lot of up-to-dating. Ding Caruana. Can Ding bounce back? That is going to be very exciting. And some other very interesting games there as well. So... I'm very much looking to, well, I know what's going on today, so I don't know why I'm saying it like that. But we'll quickly, we'll shortly come on to that. And then I'll be up to date with my analysis of the candidates, which I hope some of you, you know, can learn from. And just, you know, it's the biggest tournament of the year. So uh, it's it's a nice tournament to hopefully uh, uh, to follow. Who's going to play Magnus Carlsen? We'll, we'll find out in a couple of weeks. Okay, cheers and uh, stay safe. And I'll try to get another video out today when the games are over. So goodbye.